Therefore, without making it too long, let me say the four paths that are given in Upadesha Sara are a kind of generalization. They have, if you go deeper, many other variations too. <coughs> so what is Karma Yoga? Ishwararpitam Nechayakritam Verse 3 of the Supadesha Sara said it succinctly. When our attitude changes, when we are doing either so-called religious activity, worship or some other rituals, sometimes our rituals could be highly technical, Vedic ritual. Some other time the worship could be very simple. The mantras could be simple Sanskrit shlokas. Whereas the mantras could be from some advanced Vedic portion. So we use the word laukika and vaidika in very general terms. Laukika karma is actions in the world which could be our own professional work which could be some social work, we build a school, we run an orphanage or we are in some field of activity but what makes our work into karma yoga is even as we are doing whatever we are doing, if there is an attitude of service, nechayakritam, not for my own personal gratification, but for somebody to be happy. When they asked Mahatma Gandhi, what is your ambition in life? I believe he had once said, to wipe every tear on every face. So he wanted to put an end to sorrow in the world. So that is spirit of Karma Yoga. Because of Gandhi, Tilak, Vinoba Bhave and many others, somehow there is a widespread notion that Karma Yoga means social service. We would technically say social service or being service minded in mundane activities is one kind of Karma Yoga, really speaking. If somebody is in his own puja room and performs a form of worship for half an hour, one hour or more, more than the length and other details, in that act of worship, suppose from the bottom of his heart he says, he or she, that this is, O oh Lord, to please you, and I am not asking for any material benefits. Please bless me with more love for your lotus feet. That's a high form of karma yoga. Ishwar Arpitam. Even if God were to come and say, tell me what you want. If you say, I just want more steady love, bhakti for you. That is called Nishkama Karma. So when Karma becomes Nishkama, desireless, desire here means selfish desire, that is Karma Yoga. Having said it, I don't want to make room for a doubt or a confusion in anybody's mind. Nobody should think that, oh, that means when we worship God or pray before God, it is wrong to ask for any mundane benefits. No, it is not. Suppose you ask for somebody to get well or yourself to get better health. Suppose you ask for some financial benefits. It's not wrong. We say that if you ask for bhakti itself, I want more bhakti, more steady bhakti, that is a higher form of prayer. 
to ask for something material is not wrong. It's a lower level of spiritual maturity, that's all. Nothing wrong about it. Therefore, you and I are writing an examination, a test, or facing an interview, or facing some challenge, and we come to the temple and say, Lord, bless me that I succeed tomorrow, that I win in this challenging situation. Nothing wrong. Sri Ramakrishna once said, if a child cannot ask his mother for food or drink or some love and care, whom else will the child ask? Likewise, if we cannot ask God for some relief from some kind of suffering that we may be having, whom else will we ask? Therefore, Sakama Bhakti, asking God for money or pleasure or promotion or position or fame, name, is not wrong. But as you and I further evolve spiritually, <coughs> we ourselves will see that asking for power or power, pleasure, etc., is an endless game. We ourselves will see and we ourselves will tell God, enough, you have given me enough. Now, just give me peace, just give me steady love. All right, karma yoga is when no matter what we are doing, laukika in the world or vaidika related to God, if that is done with no selfish motive, then that is karma yoga. Bhakti yoga is a matter of heart. As there is more and more love, which can be nurtured, which can be strengthened through puja, worship, japa, repeating a mantra, and chintana, contemplating on the form of God, contemplating upon the qualities of God, and so on. Pujanam japas chintanam kramat, a line came. That is to strengthen that quality of heart certain love. Love is like God. Love defined is love defined. You can't define God. Same way love cannot be defined. When you have it, you know you have it. It is so in human love also. The purest love defies any description. Love can be expressed in many ways, but no expression actually does one-to-one -one justice to love. When I love you, I can give you a bouquet of flowers. But I can never say, or nobody can say, where a bouquet is given, there is love. <laughs> a bouquet can be given without love also. So, a thousand expressions can be of love, but love itself defies all these expressions. It is something which is subtler. So is the matter with divine love. Therefore, bhakti is something when you have it, you know it. Thirdly, Raja Yoga, which we covered in the last class, is marked by energy management. Our body has tamas and rajas. We, through exercises, through pranayama, through some moral and ethical rules that we follow, manage our energies so that the tamas and rajas become less and less and we have sattvic energy. And Maharshi Ramana highlighted in verses 11 to 16, energy management through pranayama, control of breathing, and one variation over there is, don't have to control as such, breathe normally, but notice the movement of breath. If you do prana vikshana, then that itself brings about regulation of breathing. And what is more, when breath is regulated, automatically, 
with no extra effort our mind is regulated if you do a certain regulated breathing you will be surprised to see mind becomes calmer thoughts become less you will achieve economy of thinking which is of great value in life you and i do not realize we spend a lot of our energy in thinking we spend a lot of our energy in talking if we talk where it is necessary and if we do not talk at other places if we listen at <coughs> other places leave alone the efficiency and effectiveness of our interaction getting more efficient that's one benefit apart from our communication getting more effective by not speaking unnecessarily we conserve a lot of energy sometimes by evening or after dinner 